Welcome Year 12 Geography students to a an attempt at a video. Uh, not really experienced with this, but I thought I'd have a crack at it. I like to try new things. Um, what you're looking at on our screen is the uh, Geography Year 12 uh, syllabus, and specifically we're looking at urban dynamics just here. In this video, we're going to look at the second dot point um, and I'll read that out. A case study of the results of the urban dynamics in a large city selected from the developed world, including its. And you'll see that we have four dot points that we'll need to cover. This video is going to look at Sydney. And um, I thought I would uh, initially uh, at least um, provide some introductory information about Sydney. Uh, to do that, I've used Google Earth, and we're going to do a bit of a tour of Google Earth. And I hope that you find this of value. Now, the reason why I've done the video and Google Earth is because given where we live and your age, I kind of assume that maybe our knowledge and experience in Sydney was very limited. And I thought this would be a great way to get our, um, our heads around Sydney and, and the way that it's shaped, designed, the key features, um, and then we can start to look at some of these other dot points. So this video will look um, at Sydney as an introductory uh, um, video. All right. So we'll go over to Google Earth. And what you'll see here is um, the region. Okay, and you can see that we've got Sydney CBD is in the, where all these dots are in here. And this uh, line kind of roughly shows the, the boundaries of of um, Sydney greater metropolitan area. It makes up uh, 12,367 square kilometres in total area. Um, and that's that's obviously a significant size, but there are certainly bigger cities, but it's certainly Australia's largest city. Um, okay, so let's move on to the next slide. All right, so this shows uh, Sydney as a uh, as its uh, for its central business district. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the central business district. Um, you can make out the, the the area by identifying the taller buildings. So we just get this uh, zoomed in a little. You can sort of see that area that we're talking about. Know, where you've got those tall buildings. Okay. So I'll just scroll around here and get a bit of a look at it. Um, uh, so there you go. So that's the Sydney uh, Business District. It's the area right throughout here. Okay. Um, it's the main commercial centre of the Greater Sydney area. It has lots of ties internationally. Um, it extends southwards for about uh, three kilometres, and you can sort of see that 3k length that we're talking about. So north is this way, and south is this way. And if I just orientate, that might make things a bit easier to understand. So north to the top and south to the bottom. Okay. Its north axis runs to Circular Quay, okay, which is this area right in through here. All right. And that's where we find a lot of the ferries are, are arriving and leaving from. So this location, and I also believe they come over here. Um, Central Railway Station is another key feature of the region. I've highlighted that in this area here. So this is Central Station. Okay. Um, occasionally people refer to um, other places. So for example, we've got Barangaroo up here. It's not actually part of the CBD. But the developments going on there will certainly um, probably ensure that it becomes a part of the CBD. A lot of jobs on offer in that area. A lot of skyscrapers in this part of um, Sydney, um, in places such as Hyde Park, um, the Domain, Royal, up next to the Royal Botanic Gardens. So here's Hyde Park, Royal Botanic Gardens, I think, are over here, and, um, and a few others. You'll also note that there is, uh, if I move on to my next slide, so I wanted to point out here that what we have is um, this tower. 
Okay, I'll just zoom in so we can see that tower. And shift around there and check it out. So that tower has changed names over the past years. It's had a variety of names. It's now called Sydney Tower I. Um, it was Sydney Centre Point. Um, but you can see it's basically a tall spiral. There's a restaurant up the top there, you may know that. There's also a viewing platform. And you do have 360 degrees um, views of the city from this location. Um, so you can see that, you know, you get to see a fair area. Okay. The Central Business District um, has Australia's tallest skyscrapers. And some of these include Governor Philip Tower, the MLC Centre and World Tower. Um, the last one there is predominantly apartments. So you can imagine buying one of those apartments and the type of view that you might might have. The, um, the spiral here is uh, 309 metres high. Um, but, you know, uh, it can't go any higher because there are limitations on um, how high you can go due to air traffic. And I think that number is 235 metres. So it's already above that level. So it won't be going any higher. And I don't think we'll have any other buildings that um, get, get higher as well. Sydney is home to a number of Australia's largest companies, um, as well as many other um, Asia-Pacific headquarters as well. So uh, some, some examples of these include Westpac, Commonwealth Bank, uh, Citibank, even Deutsche Bank have offices in Sydney. Um, another one is Macquarie Bank, AMP Limited and Insurance Group Australia. They, they all base themselves in Sydney. Sydney also has a large range of cultural institutions. Now, some of these include the Sydney Opera House. I think I need to zoom out for this one. Sorry, before I talk about that, um, let's take a look at the boundaries of Sydney. In the west, we have the Blue Mountains. It's this area right through here. It's a bit deceiving. It actually does look I'm a little bit taller when you zoom in. Those mountains, it's, it's a little deceiving. I mean, Google Earth is not perfect. But basically, once you get to this point here, um, you're up into the mountain ranges. Okay. Um, but basically, that's the western border of um, urban development. And you'll notice, obviously, that, you know, yes, there are pockets of suburbanisation, but there are also pockets of farmland as well that are in equal distance away from the central business district. So that's uh, the Blue Mountains. You'll notice Warragamba Dam there on the left. So that's where it's located. This is the water supply for Sydney. There is talk about raising this wall, and increasing the size, but um, you know we'll wait and see if that happens. But uh, that would be a large infrastructure project that would need to be um, uh, implemented. But that would increase water storage. There have been times in the past where Sydney has um, started to run out of uh, water storage, but at the moment it's pretty good. So that's Warragamba Dam. In the south, um, bordering the south southern end, we have Royal National Park. Um, you'll notice no development can take place in this national park, but right up to the edge of it, you will see that we have urban development. Okay, probably also bordered by Port Hacking as it um, makes its way. Inland. So anything on the south side is relatively undeveloped, whereas on the north side we see um, evidence of suburbanisation. Nice views in here by the looks of this too. Okay, next one. Okay, in the north, um, you know, technically by definition, uh, they say that it's uh, that at the northern end of Sydney is bordered by the Hawkesbury River which makes its way all the way down through here, down out to sea. However, you can see that there's not a lot of um, urban development going on, which is why I've actually shortcutted my boundary across here. And even that's not that accurate. But you can sort of make out where the urban areas are. Okay. Um, is that urban in here? Yeah, so urban in there as well. And to work out, you know, sort of you know, roughly where that line would go. Okay. But that's the boundary, that's Sydney. Um, and you can see that if you were to continue development, you've got lots of areas that you can move into, particularly out in this area. Um, out around uh, you know, Riverston, Marsden Park, uh, Kenthurst, etc. These are all rural type properties out here. You know, your five acre type properties, small acre farms, things like that. Okay. 
Now, somewhere out here too is where they're building that second airport. Um, we'll talk about that at a later point though. Okay, next slide. So you'll see that we've got the overall Sydney urban boundary here. And um, this is kind of like a more accurate um, boundary that shows the urban areas. So the, the urban areas are in that creamy color and, um, and, and anything outside that in that green area is not considered to be urban. It's farmland or forest. Okay. Um, okay, also on here, you'll also see the, I think they're the highways that network out from Sydney in all these different directions. Okay. You've heard of the M5 and the M1, well, that's what they are. All right, uh, so Sydney Opera House, um, a place, uh, multi, multi-purpose um, performance arena. Concerts are held here, shows are held here. Um, when famous people come and do speeches, they often come here, uh, orchestra, those sorts of things. So Sydney Opera House, and by the way, this is Benelong Lawn or Benelong Point. This is Benelong Point. Okay, I'm sure you can understand the uh, indigenous significance of been a long point and um, you know historically a very famous point and culturally too for Australia so Sydney Opera House we'll just rush through some of these Sydney Harbour Bridge uh, where are we going that's that long-term view Sydney Harbour oh yes yeah, so Sydney Harbour one of the, well, I guess one of the distinctive features of Sydney is its harbour. And uh, you can see the size of it. It goes all the way back, even all the way up into here in this location. Um, and urban development surrounds it, which means that a lot of houses have really great views over the water. And it, it becomes a bit of a centrepiece of Sydney because so many people visit it um, and enjoy those, uh, the activities you can do within the harbour. So it's a really strong focal point. This is obviously where the uh, New Year's Eve fireworks occur because so many places have a view of it. So it's really appropriate that it's in that location. Sydney also has um, one of the uh, one of the stronger uh, yacht cultures that we'll see within the region, within the uh, within Australia. Now these this is the Motor Yacht Club, but there's another. There are other yacht clubs uh, within all around the the harbour where you'll be able to see, for example, there's one here. You'll be able to see actual proper yachts, you know, the ones with masts and that use the wind. So the, what's this one here called? This is uh, Royal Yacht Deliveries. Uh, actually, it doesn't say. But that's just one of the marinas you'll find all around the harbour. And there are other ones, of course. Okay, what next? Ah, yes. So these are looking at probably more tourist-type locations. So we have Sea Life Sydney Aquarium. So if you're gonna to go to the aquarium, this is where you end up at. Just to put that in perspective, we're on that outskirts of the CBD. Um, 700 odd species of uh, marine uh, animals and plants are found in, in the aquarium. Taronga Zoo, this is the wharf actually. And Taronga Zoo is actually in this area up in here. Okay, so that's here. You can actually see the uh, enclosures if you zoom in enough. Like for example, this one here. This is seating, etc. So that's Taronga Zoo. Also, you'll note right on the harbour. Wildlife Sydney Zoo, next door to Sea Life. I probably could, should have put these two together, but nevertheless. Um, another tourist attraction, another reason to visit Sydney. Um, and that's where it's all happening. Okay, King Street Wharf, that's this area along here. You can see I've labelled it here. And there are lots of restaurants, bars and things underneath here. When they're open. At the moment they're not open because of coronavirus. Um, just uh, if I can just move, move ourselves around in here. So you can see if I zoom in. I know I've put that yellow mark. But all those restaurants are in under here. Very popular place to visit. It's not the only place. Um, on the other side there as well, there's... In this area in here, there's lots of restaurants. Okay, next one is the Australian Maritime uh, Muse National Museum. So anything ocean related, 
You can see a couple of old ships out here, another tourist hotspot. You'll notice that they put these all together. So here's that, that wildlife zoo, King Street Wharf, the, the um, sea life. We've got Harbour Side for shopping. That's our next one. So they've really put them all in the same place. Not the best view again, Mr. Clayton. All right, so you can see here, zoom in. Okay, etc. They have a lot of shows in these areas too. Uh, for example, just over the back here somewhere is, might be this one here. Anyway, one of them is where they have a lot of concerts, big time concerts, John Mayer and all the rest of it. Um, in this area in here, I know a couple of years ago they had the uh, Sydney Boat Show. So very, very popular happening area here. Same over here at Piermont. Okay. In fact, the yacht show went right through this whole area, right through all of this, all the way around through here. It actually went around the corner and took up around here as well. Okay, next up. Okay, Sydney's rail network. So we'll look at that now. And what you'll see in here is that uh, this is the, basically the map, and that's not entirely accurate geographically, but it certainly shows the rough directions in which all of these railway networks head out from the central business district. I want to point out central railway station right here. So this is the, the busiest uh, railway station in Sydney, and it usually is a starting point for most of the train services that run out of Sydney. The other thing I'd point out is you'll notice this makes a loop, okay? It's all that loop there, that's all underground. Um, so that's another distinct feature of Sydney's design, that uh, they have that. And in fact, we'll look at the, uh, we'll go, we'll zoom in in a minute, we'll look at Central Station and you'll see how all the railway lines just seem to end abruptly. And uh, that will give us a much better understanding of um, how it was designed. So we've got, uh, Railway networks to the north, to the south, southeast, out to the east, out to Parramatta. Parramatta is one of those um, secondary, I guess, nodal points in the city. And uh, we might, if we get a chance, we might take a look at Parramatta. Um, that's part of that uh, concept of decentralisation. So trying to get people out of the city and move them out into Parramatta, other areas. Um, Lidcombe is another one. Oh, I can't shift this, but there are a few other little nodal points that are starting to get really busy and where high rises are appearing, trying to replicate that central business district, but on a smaller scale in the outskirts. Um, the purpose of that is so people don't have to travel, for example, way out here at Oomby Plains into the city each day to work, because that would mean seeing on a train for an hour and a half each way, which is three hours of the day and too much. So they're trying to spread the work regions out so that someone in emu plains might only travel to Parramatta instead and, and hopefully will only travel 30 minutes a day and that, that um, basically makes work far more efficient okay next one so here's central station uh, right in here this is at the southern end of the cbd and you'll see that um, a lot of these railway lines just seem to end abruptly but actually they do go underground and you'll notice that this one actually does extend further this way, but does disappear underground right here. So it, it gently descends into the ground, into the tunnel, and make that loop that we spoke about earlier, right round around here, okay, and then come back out. Um, yep, okay. I'll just read this out here. The location of the metro platforms at Central will facilitate a critical interchange, fully connecting the station with, sub with suburban, intercity and regional rail services, buses, coaches and light rail. So really, it's the centre point. You can see that you just get out of the city from this point. Um, so they're, always, they're doing all these works on here, basically. And I'll just play this video. You get a bit of an idea about what they're doing. Not sure I'll have audio here, we'll see.
I've just done that, when we come back to this tunneling, I guess one of the uh, restrictions on travel in Sydney has always been Sydney Harbour Bridge. So, you know, this is part of the reason why the bridge was built you know, back in the 1930s, was to try and connect the south to the north. And of course, today we're doing it, but we're doing it underground in, with a railway network, which is pretty exciting um, in terms of, you know, cities and their development. And another point that I would make here is that you notice you've got cross networking. So you've got railway lines going this way, and you've got railway lines going this way on multi-tiered level. Okay, again, we see urban consolidation being implemented here. Um, and it's actually very, very common in Tokyo. Um, I can say that firsthand. And again, for a foreign visitor, it can be quite confusing knowing which, uh, which station to go to, given you might have you know, one here, one here, and one there. So um, it's, it's complicated. It's all very well while you can speak uh, English in Australia, but if you're an English speaker in Tokyo, very difficult. And I'm sure vice versa. So 31 stations are getting an upgrade, and I'm sure you can... Um, understand that that's a pretty big project. Okay, so that is a central station in Sydney. Okay, now we'll take a look at um, the, the uh, Sydney Sydney's central business district and TNCs. So you guys are going to do an activity um, once you finish this video. Oh, I'll give you a link to this Google, uh, Google uh, Earth activity, and you will uh, complete this activity here. To access it, once you open this document up, just simply click here, we'll open up this. So what I want you to do, essentially, is to, within that yellow region that I've created, I want you to zoom in. You'll need to play around a little bit, and you're trying to identify some of the logos for the big TNCs, and you can see we've got one here, Westpac. Okay. Another one in the background, that's hard to read, BDO, might need to find out what they are, got a Telstra here. So anyway, within that yellow region, what I want you to do is to um, identify uh, the company and the sector, it's all written in here, and um, I'll leave you with that, that's pretty straightforward. Okay, next up, now we look at Barangaroo. So this is the location of Barangaroo. And I'll just get out of this, this uh, vision for the moment. Zoom in. So here it is. So Google Earth, when it first took these photos, there were no buildings in here. There are now buildings. I don't think they're all built, but quite a few of them are. But we're talking about high rises. We're talking about parks. We're talking about um, public transport access. Uh, probably also apartment buildings, uh, corporate buildings, uh, etc. So this is inner city living. It's one of the, the key developments going on in Sydney and around Sydney. And we'll take a look at that um, uh, in, in a bit more detail as we look at urban consolidation and urban renewal as part of this course. Um, okay, and uh, what else have I got here? Different, I'm gonna go, this is a different perspective. So that kind of gives you an idea about the size of the area. You'll notice that it overlays the yellow area because it does penetrate into this area. Okay, so it's quite a large region, and it's going under redevelopment. Um, in the past, this area right through here was all port and uh, container, uh, warehousing, etc. Sort of large, open spaced. Uh, but then over time, as uh, shipping got bigger and, and busier, um, it was it was decided that um, having um, ports operate directly next to the CBD was not a good idea. So a lot of the activity that was here in terms of shipping and containerization was uh, moved out to places like Port Kembla, which is in the south. I probably need to go further out. Just go to 2D real quick. So reorientate north. 
There's a Port Kembla down here and to the north as well in Newcastle. Newcastle, where are you, Newcastle? Newcastle, sorry, too far. In Newcastle as well, so there's a bit of shipping and, and uh, containerizing, containerization going on here. Okay, that will be the end of our first video. I hope you enjoyed that. And um, I hope now you have a bit of an idea about Sydney and its, its central business district. Thanks.